Perhaps the least shocking news of the week, Bill, big tech still plonking a lot of their profits outside of our realm, effectively, um, overseas. Do you blame the companies themselves at all? Is there a moral aspect to this? G'day, Tom. Look, yeah, of course, there, there is a, probably a moral aspect. A lot of corporates, uh, modern corporations have what's called CSR, corporate social responsibility. They make a big song and dance about uh, doing things for the community. And um, But you know what? When the rubber hits the road, um, probably the best thing they can do is pay their fair share of tax. And you, you mentioned big tech. Google just booked, for, I think, $5.2 billion uh, out of local customers uh, and paid something like $76 million tax. It, it is outrageous. I mean, I'm not saying it's illegal. It is all legal avoidance. It's minimisation. It's what you and I would do, for example, with our uh, tax returns, do, do a tax reduction and tax minimisation. But we can't do it on the scale of a big corporate. We can't shift our wages or our salaries to Singapore or Cayman Islands. We can't, you know, put our subsidiaries into debt to reduce taxable income. Um, and so they're not paying their fair share. And it's, it's unfair to uh, wage earners and salary earners, small business owners, uh, who also can't do that kind of scale of tax minimisation. And it's also unfair to our budget, right? That This is money that would be going to paying for schools, hospitals, infrastructure, protecting our environment, uh, and so on. So is this just clarifying your idea or your party's idea on this? Well, I'm a backbencher, Tom. I have some ideas. I've been put forward a discussion paper um, with the Curtin Centre and I made a speech yesterday on it um, and basically said we need to be ambitious in our uh, tax reform, particularly to make sure multinationals pay their fair share of tax. There are international efforts underway with the OECD, um, but it's really, really hard mm. to get 140-odd um, countries to agree on rewriting the tax rules and agreeing to a global minimum tax rate, which is what the Biden administration uh, thankfully is actually pushing forward uh, most recently. There are things that we can do uh, at the domestic level, uh, and other countries have done a digital services tax, like France, Spain, UK, Italy, uh, and that is to push the momentum towards the international consensus, but also raise revenue from those who are not paying their fair share uh, until you reach an international agreement on a, on a global minimum tax rate. France uh, has a 3% DST on big tech. You, you make $500 million in, a, in France, you pay at least that 3%. You can't shift that outside. Um, and if you look at it, there are probably, I mean, the estimates are probably hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, that uh, are, are not going back into our coffers uh, that could be paying for things that are important to everyday Australians. So is it easier maybe to get this idea up if you talk about where the money goes, maybe even hypothecate it, this talk around how we paid for increased aged care costs, as an example? Have you thought about trying to designate the money? Well, I think there's plenty of need. I mean, if you look at the post-COVID uh, phase of economic recovery and budget repair, and I know uh, our uh, side of politics will be making our announcements around that fair uh, budget repair that's fair, uh, that addresses in a, a rising inequality and all the impacts of COVID-19 post the upcoming federal budget. What I'm also saying is that as part of that conversation, when you have um, IKEA paying zero tax and a billion dollars out of Australia, when you have Google, 5.2 billion, when you have Vodafone, 3 billion and zero tax, when you have Nando's, 191 million and zero tax, something's not right. Um, and now some of those deductions that they, they undertake, fair enough, but they are not paying their fair share. They are, they are reducing their taxable income to the extent that they don't pay a, a reasonable amount of tax where they make their profits in Australia. Why should the average wage earner, the average salary earner and the business owner, small business owner, who pay on average about 23 or 24 uh, percent for their taxes, uh, do that and pay their fair share mainly, while these big companies and big tech as well, multinational companies, uh, reduce their taxable uh, income down or they reduce their tax base to zero or a couple of percentage points. That is deeply unfair, Tom. It's deeply unfair. It needs to be addressed. As I said, we could be doing more. Josh Feidelberg had an opportunity. Uh, a couple of years ago, Treasury looked at a DST, the same one that France put in place on big tech, and he squibbed it. Um, there are other options as well that could be, uh, you know, looked at with respect to a data tax, which is where you, you look at taxing the value of data. It's very complicated, very complex. You could you could look at a 1% tax on where data is bought and sold through the brokerage space. 
you can look at it in different ways across the entire tech industry or multinationals that use our data. I mean, we give, a, give away our data pretty much for nothing and it's monetized and it's used in algorithms and, and um, these companies make a lot of money out of all of this personal data. So there are things that we can do now as well as helping the international effort. Peter Khalil, appreciate your thoughts. Always good to get some ideas in from backbenchers. We'll perhaps talk about it in the wake of the budget, see what's in there.